So this week we will be doing confidence interval estimation. So chapter seven is all about finding out the confidence interval, estimating a population proportion. That is your section 7.1. And your section 7.2 is estimating population mean. Okay. Now, why do we have to do this? Uh, for example, say, I will give you a set of numbers, say one, two, three, four, five. And if I ask you to find out the mean, what do you do? You just add all the numbers, divide by total number of uh, digits present there, right? So whatever I give you is a sample. I cannot give you the entire population, right? Now, whatever you find out is related to that sample. It is not related to a population, agree? Now, if you want to find for a population, it's highly impossible. So, okay, so uh, what do we do? Um, where was I? Okay, population. <laughs> okay, so uh, to find out uh, the mean or any parameter it might be, for the population, you need to find for the sample first and then use the same value and find it for the entire population, okay? So that's what we do in chapter seven. We find an interval called as confidence interval. That means we will not find the exact value. Instead, we will find the upper bound and the lower bound. Say if I give you the entire population in this term of CC, and if I ask you to calculate the mean grade, population mean grade, so if you use the confidence interval and determine, whatever you get is some average between two numbers. You will not get an exact number. Instead, you get some interval or a range. Say, for example, grades might be between 80 to 90, the population mean. It might be between 80 to 90, but not the exact number, okay? So that is what we did or we studied in chapter seven, fine? So now uh, you know how to calculate that through hand, by hand, and you can use the calculator where you use inverse T and then you find out confidence interval. Or for high sample size, you can use JMP to calculate the confidence interval, okay? So let us start. I'll go straight to the assignment. Okay, so you have, uh, you need to find out confidence interval for the proportion, and then you need to find out mean population proportion and population mean, and what else? You need to summarize that in a form of table, and then you just have to comment if you find any interesting thing which is happening there. And then finally, you will be reporting whatever you have done in this lab and also on the graphs, okay? So it is a short and easy assignment to do. Now, I guess I have... Okay, that's not seven, right? Yes. Okay. Like this. Have it here, but okay. okay. Let's start from the word file. So Open the Word file and let's type the format first and then we can 
paste the graph. Write your name. Section S212. The name. And date. Assignment seven. Underlined. Okay. First problem is what? Just copy the same problem here from from your lab manual, and you can paste it here. Do this, and we will start. Okay, so open your subset of small town. Done. Now let us go to the first problem here. They are asking us to find the confidence interval for all these variables. Okay, so we are going to draw a histogram. We will tell JMP to draw the histogram. And from there, we will see how to obtain the confidence interval. So. Open your uh, subset, and how do you plot the histogram? You have to go to Analyze, Distribution. Analyze, Distribution. Okay, so let us see the variables. Uh, it is sex, race, education level, marital status, and smoke. So I will do for one variable, and you can do for the rest of the variables, okay? So getting back to here, uh, okay. You have to choose the sex variable to the Y column and then click on OK. Okay, now you have the histogram here, but I need it in a horizontal way. So you can change that in the display option. Go to display option and horizontal layout. Display option, horizontal layout, done. Now, you need to find the confidence interval. So whatever you have here is the frequencies, or say number of people present. So number of females in this uh, data set is 66, number of males is 64. So total number I have is 130. That's your sample size. So it might be different for each uh, individual, okay? So now let us find the confidence interval here. Okay, so now you have three numbers. So all these are called as confidence level. Okay, so usually we use 90, 95, or 99 percentage. That will be your confidence level. So in this assignment, we will be using 95 percent. Okay, so confidence interval and then 95. So this 0.95 is nothing but your confidence level. Click on that. Done? So once you do this, you're done. So you just have to find the confidence interval, that's what you did here. So here, whatever you see, the lower CI and upper CI is the actual range of the uh, variable sex. Okay, now you will just copy the whole thing. Copy the whole thing. You have a selection tool. So copy the whole thing, Control C or Command C in your Mac, and go back to your Word file. Here you have to you have to label it as sex. That's your variable name, and then you will be pasting it here. Now you can change it to picture format so that it will be good to see. So whatever you see here, oh, I guess I cannot drag it. Okay, so that's it. That's your first problem. Now you have to do for the rest of the variables. Okay, repeat the same thing. 
if you have completed question number one. So for question number two, just copy the question number two A. Question number two A, copy that and paste it in your Word file only after completing the first one. Okay, okay, so we will see how to do for two variables. Done. Now go to your JMP, I mean the subset of small term. Okay, so here go to analyze distribution, analyze distribution. Now, as you can see, this is for height separated by sex. There are two variables, so you have to okay. So you have to put this height in the y column and sex in the by column. First variable in the y column, second variable in the by column. Done. After doing this, click on OK. You will see this plot, this figure. All you have to do is change it to horizontal layout. We will do that first. Display option, horizontal layout. So once you are done with this, okay? So now all you have to do is find out the confidence interval. How can you do that? Same uh, procedure. You have to click on, click on the red arrow and here you can see confidence interval. Go there and choose as 0.95. So you have to do this twice for one question. For each question, you have to do this twice because it is separated by sex, you have female and male. Confidence interval, 0.95. Okay, so now I want you to paste the whole thing here. Go to your uh, selection tool. Do it one by one. Uh, I don't think so. You can copy the whole thing at once. I don't think so. So do it one by one. So I will copy this. Control C. Go to your Word file. Control V and change it to picture format so that it looks good. And you can minimize if you want. If it is too lengthy, just minimize it. Done. And now. We have one more uh, plot histogram to paste. So go back to that. Control C again, and we will come to the word file here. Control V, change it to picture format and minimize. That's it. Okay, so once you are done with 2A, next is 2B, just go to your lab manual, copy that question and paste it in your Word file and repeat the procedure which you did for A. Okay, paste the graph here. Do it till here. Okay, so here we will be drawing a table. So you can draw a table like this. Go to insert option, 
insert table and you need for variable confidence interval um, whether it is valid or not and why. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And you can just randomly choose the uh, row numbers. Done. So here we will be having the variables name, variables. variables and then confidence interval so you can just write it as CI valid or not valid or not And then the reason for that. Okay, done. Now you are just going to write the variables uh, for whichever you have plotted the histogram. So you did for race. Race. Then what else is that? We have sex there. Yes. Education level. Now, if you want to add additional rows, you can do this. So you just have to right click on the uh, the last row, right click on the last row, and here you have insert option. Okay, if you want to add additional rows, so you can add like this. Right click on the last row, insert, and here you have insert row below. You have to choose that. Okay, I get one. So if I need more, I will repeat the same procedure. Now I have BMI. Okay, so now all you have to do is write the confidence interval. So how do you do that? 
So my first variable is sex. So I need to record the confidence interval of this. So it is between 0.4 to 0.5 for females, and for males it is 0.4 to 0.5. So it's almost same. So I'll just write it once. So if your values are different, or you can do this. For female, you can write the interval as 0.4 to P, 0.5. Enter, and you need to enter for male also. I got the same value, so I'm just writing it twice, okay, like this. So one decimal is enough, one decimal is enough. Fine, so fill this and I will tell you how to check whether it is valid or not. Uh, yeah, you can. Sorry? The table? Okay. So here, um, okay, so the, uh, I'm just talking about the first variable. So here, if you can look at the picture, we have confidence interval. So there we have lower CI and upper CI. Right, that's your lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval. Now, you have to write this first and this as the next. So what you have to do is just create a table like this and you have to enter the confidence interval, the range. Question actually. Okay, so uh, once you have completed filling the table for part one, for part two, for writing the confidence interval, you have to see only the mean value, okay? Because in your lab manual, they're asking for mean, so you have to write the values which were there in the mean, okay? So for question 2A, the CI values will be 62.8 and 63.9, fine? How did I get that? It's here. You have to concentrate only on the first row, the mean. Okay, check for lower CI and upper CI in the first row and you have to enter those values. Not the one with the standard deviation or other things, only related to mean. That's it. And then do we write it the same way as the first ones with the yes. less than yes. P? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so, okay, so while writing, say for example, I had 68 point, 07 and 69.62. So I had 62.8 less than, this has to be a mu. Now you don't have that symbol in the word file. I mean you have, but that's okay. You can just write it as mu. Okay, because we are doing for mean. So mean is denoted by mu, the symbol mu. Okay, so you can just write it as mu. Or if you want, you can write it as mean, M-E-A-N. Anything is fine. But do not denote it as P because P is population proportion and this is mean. Any other questions, Marisa? 
Um, no, that was all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is for those who have completed the first two columns. Uh, so I just want to explain it again. Now you just have to write the variables name or which we did in the part one and part two, and then you're going to fill the second column with the confidence interval. You have to write confidence interval for how many of the variables is present in each figure or uh, these two gram. Okay, so after doing that, we need to check whether it is valid or not. So how do we do this? So if you go back to your lab manual or if you just see the question number three, it says for categorical variables, you need at least five success and five failures for the interval to be valid. That's first part. And second part is for continuous variables, you need a sample size greater than 30 or you need to check for normality. That That's what a question says, right? Now, what are the categorical variables? The first part, whichever you did till here are the categorical variables, right? Now, to check the CI are valid or not, you need to check whether you have at least five or not, okay? Now, what do I mean by five success and five failure? Now, if you can remember, if you can remember, you had N into P, N into P equal to and N into Q. Now, what is this P and Q? P is the probability of success and Q is the probability of failure, right? This you have studied in the previous chapter. Now, given P, how do you calculate Q? You can calculate Q with this formula, one minus P, okay? Now, what they are saying is this N, P, and N, Q must be greater than five. At least five means it has to be minimum five or greater than five, okay? Now, I don't want you to go back to your pictures and calculate each and everything because if you can do, you can do, that's fine. So here you can see you have frequencies here, right? Now, N is given by the count, the count column. So for females, N is equal to the sample size is 66, and the probability is also given. This is P. P is given, N is given. You just have to multiply and check whether it is greater than or less than five, okay? And likewise, you will be doing for each and every picture. Now, I don't want you to do that. Let's do it for first variable and check whether it is greater than five or not. Okay, so now as you can see here, the sample six, the size was 66 and you are just multiplying it by 0.5. I'm just taking one decimal places and you can easily see that it is greater than five. Now, this is uh, highly possible for the sample size greater than 30. Okay, now whatever you have to do is, I don't want you to calculate for each figure, just go through the column of count here this column, the count column, and see whether it is greater than five or not. Definitely it will be the greater than five because your sample size was between 130 to 160 or something. So it has to be greater than five, okay? But it's better to check one. Now, if it is greater than five, you will come back to the table here, come back to the table here, and you're just going to write it is valid. And why is it valid? because n into p is greater than five. That's it, okay? This is not capital N, this is small n. This is the reason you have to give. If it is not valid, you will write n into p is less than five, okay? So I don't think so that will happen. Yeah, because for each, for both of the variable, the confidence interval will be of the same range. Okay. 
So if at all you have that case, you can write two answers in the same column. Okay. If it is five, then it's not valid. It has to be greater than five. Yes. So this has to be followed. So this has to be followed only for the first four variables, one, two, three, four, five variables, okay? And from here, after fourth variable from here, that is part two, for this you have to check whether your sample size is greater than 30. Okay, for that, you can check this figure here. This is for problem 2A, N is greater than 30. So I say it is valid, okay, like that. Okay, so once you have done completing question number three, you have to answer question number four and five. So for question number four, you just have to comment some interesting findings which you find in each graph. So at least five would be good. Okay, and for the final question, you'll be reporting whatever you have learned in this particular lab. So six to seven points is more than enough. Okay, and I guess that's it. So I will also be uploading this file in the Blackboard. So that will be end of your lab seven.